えー、お疲れ様です。みなさん、こんばんは。えっ、ー、と、ちょっと、クリスマスでお、僕の家族は、あの、フロリダとカリフォルニアから来ているから、ちょっと一緒にご飯食べて、あの、時間がちょっと遅くなりましたから、ごめんなさい。今、ちょっとこんな遅い時間で、あの、普通は7時なのに今9時で、ちょっと遅いから、あの、すみませんね。ごめんなさい。えっとね、Um, so, yeah, everyone,、uh, good evening. Sorry, started a little bit late tonight. Thank you, for, you everyone, for your patience and for、uh, showing up at the late hour on, on Sunday night.、Uh, hope everyone's having a great holiday se- season. Hopefully, nobody's working.、Um, <laughs> you know, hopefully, everybody's getting to spend time with their family and relax.、Um, Won't see you again until after, after Christmas, obviously. So, <laughs> sorry, a chat.、Um, laughing at chat.、Uh, yeah, I hope everyone has a good Christmas if you celebrate it. If not, you know, whatever. Oh, sorry to hear that, Saji Chan.、Uh, I guess you'll be in front of the computer studying a lot then since you, since you hurt your ankle. I hope you feel better.、Um, you know, I just wanted to. Say thanks, everyone who's sticking with me. Where,、uh, I think maybe that me missing that last week kind of made me lose a few more students because I think I checked the last YouTube video and it was, we're down to like 40 views or something. So, really whittling down to, I think, a really core group of students here,、uh, which is you know, totally fine with me.、Um, obviously, this is classes for whoever, whoever is interested. And you know, I want to thank everybody sticking with it because you know, this is really just kind of. An experiment as you've seen so far, I'm sure. And、um, I'm learning a lot about you know, my capabilities as a teacher and my Japanese abilities and you know, what,、um, you know, what kind of material I can, I can use to teach this class effectively. So you know, I'm hoping that this kind of is just a springboard to create a really great class in the future、um, where, and, you know, where I won't have to actually write the curriculum like I'm doing now, but I can just kind of expand on the curriculum. And so you guys are kind of an experimental group. So, I want to thank you again for your patience and everything. And,、um, you know, being that I'm totally unprofessional and I、uh, have really no teaching experience before this. So, I want to say thanks again. I really appreciate you guys sticking with me. But、um, <clears throat> you may have noticed again that the syllabus has dramatically changed.、Um, no surprise there, obviously. I just took off all the dates because everything's just kind of garbled now. So, it's just lesson numbers.、Um, if you. I don't know if you have any questions or anything, it's, you know, just ask me. But there's a few dates now that are,、um, that are empty. I haven't, I haven't figured out what I'm going to put in there.、Uh, still kind of switching things around a little bit and noticing mistakes I've made. So, yeah, still kind of work in progress, obviously. So, again, as always, thank you for your patience and、uh, thanks for sticking with me.、Um, I don't know, maybe one day I'll be able, be able to write a te- textbook and I'll give all my.、Uh, My first, my first session students were royalties on it or something. I don't know. <laughs>、um, I do want to say that I'm going to、uh, hopefully keep assigning a little bit more lengthy homework assignments.、Um, looks like there's the same group of people that are doing the homework assignments. It's about, I think, seven of you.、Um, but I want to start going over the homework assignments at the beginning of each class. Uh, so that way, you know, if there are any questions, or I saw that there were some wrong answers on there, so I wanted, wanted to go over that with everybody. And that way, you can kind of get a refresher、uh, on the last lesson. And also, just, you know, so like I said, if anybody has any questions or were, wasn't clear about something, there w a s a few blank, and blank、um, uh, places where people didn't put any answer in, in at all. I'm assuming that's because they either didn't understand it or whatever. but You know, I think a big part about learning anything is keeping it fresh in your mind and,、um, you know, re- re- reviewing things while you still, you know, have them in your recent memory.、Um, you know, if you only learn something one time and just kind of move on and never come back to it again until, you know, a lot of time passes,、yeah, inevitably you're going to forget the material, in my opinion. So, unless you're, you know, you have photographic memory or something. So, Um, let's go ahead and, and go into the homework here. And I'm going to be just showing you the, the form that you would be taking yourself. So,、uh, goodbye for now.
And here we are on the homework. Um, Google Documents, man, it's really great. You can you can make these uh, assignments, and they have like 15 or so different themes that you can add to them. So this this nice clean looking homework theme is not of my making. I'm cheating and using Google's uh, format here, but anyway, so. Um, the first question here is, which of the following can mean me or I? And if you remember, let me, that's probably way too small for you guys to see. Can you guys see that? Okay, I'll zoom in a little bit. Is that, is that better? Can you see that? Okay, well there's the link on the, uh, okay. The link, somebody put the link in the chat, so, um, and obviously the link's on the subreddit, but. So the first question here is, which of the following can be me or I? And um, the first one here that does, it's Watashi. The second one does, it means Ware Ware, Ware Ware, us or we. The third one does not. This is kanajo, or wait, kanajo or kadashi? Text, text in my own Japanese, kadashi, sorry. Uh, kadashi, which means him, or boyfriend, so no, that's not. Uh, boku means, oh, you know, I'm sorry. The second one doesn't mean me or I, it means us, so not me. I mean, it's a pluralization, so not the second one, my apologies. The fourth one that it does, it's a more colloquial form, if you remember, boku. Uh, boku is uh, the male way, more colloquial ways for male to say me or I. And then washi, washi is kind of a colloquial way for females to say to say me. So those three do mean me or I, and the other two, second and third, don't. For the second here, uh, I asked you to write the pluralized form of the following words, or kanji. And really, I just wanted to kind of hint at the fact that you just add the kanji Tachi to the end of these. So watashi would be watashi tachi. And then moving down the list, you would just add the tachi kanji here to those five. So I just kind of want to drive home the tachi kanji pluralizing um, you know, nouns. Uh, the next question is choose the correct particle to make the sentence mean my yellow cat. So you see here. In this sentence, the word my, blank, yellow, kiro, neko, des. So the particle that goes here is a possessive particle, no. So it's the third option here. Um, so, watashi no kiro neko des. The next question, uh, translate the following sentence into Japanese. Where is my white car? So if you remember the koso ado, we're using doko, where. Um, so, watashi, or let's just go with ore. Ore no shiroi is white. Adjective, an e adjective that ends in e. If you remember, um, the kanji never ne never changes, but the end of the word on an adjective will change. But in this case, it just stays the same in the base form of shiroi. Car is kuruma. And then you mark that subject. You're asking where is the car, so the car is a subject. You mark that with the particle wa, and then you use your doko for the do, uh, asoko do no doko. And then you could say ka. And in this sentence, you would definitely, you wouldn't say des ka because you're using ore, which means you're already um, talking in a colloquial situation, so you're probably not going to be using des in this situation. So you can just say dokoka, or <clears throat> like I said before many times, you can just take the kai out and use a, you know, raise your voice at the end of the sentence. So, what no shiroi kuruma wa doko? Translate the next sentence. His bicycle is way over there. So, kare no possessive. His kare no jitensha. Bicycle, G Tencha, self moving car, G Tencha, wa. 
Asokol des. So again, we're using um, our Asokol, Asokol, or Asokol, Asokol do, and Asoko, if you remember, is the furthest away from the three of um, Koko, Soko, and Asoko. So way over there is Asoko. You don't necessarily have to directly translate it as way over there. I just wanted to make sure you knew clearly which one I was talking about. Um, you can also say in this sentence, Kare no jitensha wa Asoko ni arimasu. Um, and that's something we're going to kind of cover a little bit today. So, But this is, you can get the message across with this. So uh, in this sentence, she is cute. Kanajo, oops, oops, <laughs> Kanajo wa, as for the girl, she is cute, kawaii. You could also say kawaii desu, kanajo wa kawaii, kanajo wa kawaii. So you see kawaii is a, uh, an e adjective. And I hope you're noticing also that, you know, the particles are always in hiragana. Um, Usually the ends of, of adjectives and verbs, or not usually, but always the ends of adjectives and verbs and the parts that can change are also always in hiragana. And then, although they can be written in hiragana, and sometimes are, the base form of uh, nouns, adjectives, verbs are kanji. So finally, the last sentence to translate here, the teacher's book is right here. So sensei no hon. The teacher's book, wa, as for the teacher's book, koko, sensei no hon wa koko. An informal way of saying that. There's no desk. Sensei no hon wa koko. <clears throat> now, on this next question, I asked, asked you to, oh, I'm sorry, one more, uh, a few more, a few more translation questions. Uh, this is with dialogue, so following dialogue, where is the train station? looking at a map, and the answer is right here. So, eki, that was a vocabulary word from an earlier lesson. Ba, as for the eki, where is it? Doko. Eki wa doko. The answer would, for, what, what the answer that I gave translated is, right here, just to say koko. Koko. Right here, koko. Okay, so how about this one? Is the hotel over there? Yes, it is. Hotel wa. As for the hotel, asoko. Are you going to say asoko? Hotel wa asoko. You're kind of looking or pointing um, in a general direction while you're saying this. Hotel wa asoko. And the answer, yes, it is. A. Hey. So, mm. hi, or hi, or mm. or so this. Lots of options here, if you remember from our last lesson. Um, now, for the la for this last next question, what I did was just ask you to take whatever formality you used because I didn't specify and. Um, change the formality from whatever you had to something else. So like, for this one, or, ore no shiroi kuruma wa doko, you would say, ore no shiroi kuruma wa doko desu ka? For this, kanajo no jitencha wa asoko desu. You would take the desu off and just say, kanajo ni, no jitencha wa asoko. For here, kanajo wa kawaii, you could say, kanajo wa kawaii desu. For here, sensei no hon wa koko, you would say, sensei no hon wa koko desu. For here, eki, Wa doko, eki wa doko desu ka? Koko wa koko desu. So you can see, obviously, this is pretty repetitive. You're just adding desu. Uh, desu, obviously, being a very important part of the Japanese language. Um, so moving on. Just to ask you to select which of these four goes from furthest away to closest. So <clears throat> the, what you're looking for is asoko, soko, and koko, the final option here. Asoko being the furthest away when you're describing something. Soko being the medium, and koko being right here in front of us. The next question is which types of the following, uh, or which of the following types of lodging in Japan are the most traditional? And 
Um, what should be a dead giveaway with this is that one of them is kanji and the rest is in katakana. So right away you know that katakana is all imported words. So traditionally, uh, nyokan, uh, nyokan, we learned about last lesson, is the most traditional. Some of the characteristics of the yokan, tatami mats, maybe a traditional bath. Um, some of you put a bath on the top floor. Uh, that's actually a, a, a characteristic of any really Japanese lodging. Uh, hotels all have major, you know, public baths on the top floor. So, yokan is just going to be like a traditional room with uh, futons that you put in the wall and take out, tatami mats, maybe some traditional Japanese uh, calligraphy on the wall and a flower arrangement. Um, so, what is the proper way? Moving on, what is the proper way to address your boss, Mr. Yamada? Yamada kun, Yamada san, Yamada chan, or just Yamada? Uh, this would be Yamada-san. Chan is for uh, females, usually younger. It's a colloquial. Kun is for males, colloquial. And Yamada is just um, just more colloquial. Usually used when talking about someone, not um, addressing someone. So addressing your friend's younger sister, I. Uh, that would be I-chan, which is chan is for females, usually younger than you. Um, and then the last question here is just so you can find your own uh, answers on the on the spreadsheet. So this will be. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and post uh, everybody's answers publicly so you can check that out. Look at your answers and check them, and I'll have an answer key. And uh, hopefully, you guys, um, you know, liked. <coughs> hopefully, you guys liked uh, the. Um, the homework being a little bit longer, you know, I'm going to keep adding every as I go through this class over and over again. I'm going to keep adding and adding, so that way you can really just go and hopefully just get an un, you know, just keep doing practice until your heart's content and there it really never ends. But you know, at this point, um, I'm sorry, they're a little bit short. I wish I could make them longer, but I just don't have a whole lot of time. So, um, but hopefully, I'll try to uh, you know consistently make them that that little bit longer length and. Um, you know, go over them in each class like this, so that way we can clear things up and just get a little refresher. I think that's good, like I said. So today, um, what we're going to talk about is, let me get over back to my thing here. Um, today we're going to talk about a few more basic particles and grammatical structure, obviously, that goes along with them, and we're going to talk about um, some basic verb conjugation. So. We already know uh, a few particles, hopefully you guys have picked up on, that we've used really frequently, and they are uh, no, which is a possessive particle. And keep in mind that, you know, this particle can be used in other various ways. And sometimes, well, technically, in, I mean, it's going to be in a possessive sense. It's going to kind of be used in uh, a not as a clear-cut way. So. I don't want to get really into too far complicated uses of particles just because, you know, you'll get it over time and it's just kind of more advanced things. But no can also be a, uh, combined with a lot of other particles directly to, to have very just different meanings like no ni, no de. Um, so, um, but yeah, you know, the basic usage that I, I'm, I'm thinking you guys, most of you already know from heart is, you know, the basic structure of my, his, hers, of the possessive usage. Uh, next is wa, and you know wa obviously marks the subject of a sentence, and you know um, another very very important and common particle. Uh, and then des isn't technically a particle, but you know just a part of a sentence structure that we were learning where you end a sentence in a polite way. Um, and obviously, the more colloquial version of that is da, and even more colloquial is just leave it out altogether. Um, and this is something I kind of need to fine tune for my own knowledge when describing things in Japanese. But as far as I know, <clears throat> if you're ending a sentence in anything other than a verb, it's going to be able to end in des. So I'm pretty sure that's a, a, a pretty much universal rule, but I could be wrong on that. So, um, well, I'm. I'm going to teach myself that eventually one of these days. But anyway, so today I want to go over some some more particles. Um, and, you know, I think we may have briefly touched on these in that one lesson where we went over a few particles. But 
Um, we're going to go into some more detail today and get some example sentences. So uh, first, first is knee, and I'm going to go ahead and go into my um, uh, document view here so you guys can, so I can type. And here we are. Okay, so knee, the particle knee. Now, uh, this is used to look to Im uh, indicate a direction of an action um, or a direction where something is happening. Where you are being, where you are doing, where you are putting something, where you have something. Um, so, the first example is sem pi, which is an important vocabulary word. And you know, I'm going to be introducing you know new vocabulary words in every sentence. And <clears throat> I want to I want to do that just so you can get more exposure to the language, obviously, and, and learn as much as possible. And again, like I said in the beginning of this course, you know, this <clears throat> you can kind of take. Uh, take out of it, you know, depending on your level, to hopefully take a lot out of it. And if this, if these voca if the nouns and stuff and verbs are, are too much for you and you're getting lost learning the, you know, the meaning of the grammatical principles because you can't follow the vocabulary of the words, if you see a noun or a verb, just substitute it for something you know, you know, like your own name or a tomodachi or watashi or something really common like that that you know. Just substitute that in really quick so you can get the gist of, uh, the, you know, the grammatical construct. But so senpai means. Uh, a superior or one older than you like if you're a junior and they're a senior they're your senpai or you know if you are an uh, intern and they're you know been there for a uh, minute they're been at your company for five years they're your senpai uh, so senpai no ie house ni ikimasu so I will go to my senpai's house. So no, we know this particle already is possessive. So senpai's house, and then the direction, that's the direction you're going to be going. So senpai no ie ni ikimasu. You could also say uchi for this. Keep in mind that a lot of these vocabulary words obviously have different pronunciations depending on sometimes the context and if they're in a combination or not. So um, also just a real quick pointer, you know, when you're ending a, a verb, a, when a sentence ends in a verb and a, on a polite note, it ends in uh, with the e. So the, the base form of iku uh, to go is iku. So that changes to a ki and then mas. So if it's a verb that ends in uh, su, it changes to shi and then mas. So that's a polite way to end a, a sentence in a verb. So anyway, uh, ki, oops, excuse me. And I'm sorry, I'm going to try to focus on not pounding on my keyboard so it's not really loud, but... Uh, senpai no ie ni ikimasu. I will go to my friend's house. Or, I'm sorry, not my friend's, my senpai's house. Uh, another example, kami, paper. Kami ni kakimasu. I will write it on the paper, or I will write on paper. Um, again, a lot of these sentences may have, you know, different meaning depending on the context, but the general idea is like the direction of which or where I'm writing, where I'm going to write is on the paper. So again, this verb is kaku and it changes to the key, the E form, mas. Kami ni kakimas. Uh, next example, baste, oops, baste. The bus stop. You can see a katakana here. Bus, uh, basu is bus, and te is stop. So, bus te no oka. You can guess what that is. A locker. So the lock, the locker at the bus stop. Ni position particle. Okimas. So, baste no roka ni okimasu. I'll put it in the locker at the bus station, or I'll put it in the bus station's locker. So you're talking about maybe telling your um, your friend where where you're putting uh, your bag for them to pick up later, or something like that. Putting it 
バス停のロッカーに置きます。So you can see that the knee particle is marking、uh, where you're going to be putting something. Last example,、uh, a little bit kind of different usage here, but Yoji, four o'clock, and just a quick、uh, info. We will be covering times, numbers, and calendars and stuff like that at a later time, so no worries. But、um, Yoji ni shokuji. Shokuji is、uh, eating or food. Shoku. G. Shimas. You could also just say Yoji ni tabe, tabe mas, but this is just another way to say that. So,、um, I'll be eating at four. I'll be eating at four. So, Yoji ni shokuji shimas. So, you can see here it's marking、um, a time as opposed to an actual place. So, it can do that as well. You know, it's just. Hopefully, with these four examples, you can kind of get an idea of, of the ways that these are, this particle is used. And、um, with almost every particle, as with everything really in language in Japanese, you're probably picking up a theme. There are exceptions and there are you know,、um, weird usages and、um, things like that. So just, just keep in mind that, again, I'm repeating myself with this with almost everything else, but you, know, you may see this in a strange place where you think, well, that doesn't seem like it's really marking.、Uh, You know, a, a position or something like that. But、um, so you will have to learn, you know, those individual usages. But、um, in time, you know, they'll come after you, you keep studying. So, so, senpai no ie ni ikimas. Kami ni kakimas. Baste no rokka ni okimas. Yoji ni shokuji shimas. Hopefully, you're noticing too here that、um, at the end, of, after ni, it's always a verb. So、um, you're not going to say, like, yeah, that's just the, that's the grammatical construct that the verb is after the ni. So you can see right away that it's different from English in that,、um, you know, if you were to say, I'm going to write on the paper, paper comes first. And writing comes second. I mean, I guess technically you could say writing, my writing will be done on the paper, but, or writing will be done on the paper, but obviously that sounds a little bit awkward. You know, the natural flow of the languages are opposite. So,、um, the next particle I want to talk about is, let me just hop into chat real quick and make sure. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. Somebody thought. <laughs> When I was saying okimas, oku,、uh, oku is to put and okiru is to wake up. But when you're saying them in the more formal version of okimas, they're the same word, they sound the same. So okimas and okimas. So somebody thought I was going to say that I woke up in the coin locker at the, <laughs> at the bus station. That's pretty funny.、Um, anyway, back to the lesson here. So the next article I want to talk about is. E. And e is probably the easiest article to, particle to learn, which is why I want to throw it in here. But it's just marking where your、uh, direction where you will go. So, really, not very many usages for this. Eki, or, I didn't even have an example. So, eki, or where are we going today? How about、um, gakko? Gakko e ikimasu. Going to school. So, again, obviously, hiragana in between the kanji, going to school. So, it's a mark, marking a direction where you're going. I don't even think it's used for any other usages other than this, along with this verb of to go. I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, I mean, pretty much that's really all you're going to use it for. So, it's a really simple particle. Uh, next one is de. And you know, there can be a lot of confusion in beginner, with beginner students between the particles ni、uh, and de because they're similar, but they're, they are very different. Well, not very different, but similar, but、um, definitely different. So, 
de is used to mark where an action takes place. So where you will actually be doing the verb, not the direction in which it's going to be done. So with ni, for example, like we used it for putting something in the coin locker. It may sound similar in that you know something is going in the coin locker or it's happening in the coin locker, but you're still talking about you know the direction you're going to be putting something, not where you're actually putting something. If you were to actually say use day in that sentence, you would say you would use it to mark um, the bus station. So bus te de. You know, at the bus station, I will be putting my bag in a coin locker. So if that makes sense. So, so for some examples, uh, tomodachi, my friends, no. And I'm just trying to repeat, repetitively use the particles that we've already gone over. So hopefully you're really getting ingrained with what they mean, like this possessive, possessive particle. So, tomodachi no apato. De game shimas. So, going to play a game or a video game at my friend's house. So, the action of playing a video game will take place inside of my friend's house. Next example is hashi de. Oh, you know, actually, let me do one more other one. So, sen, uh, ko, ko, uh, kohai. Kohai is the opposite of senpai. You can see the kanji here is the same. The, the first kanji here is after, or behind, or rear, and the other one was ahead of, or forward. So. Um, kohai. Now, you may notice right away that these pr are pronounced differently. The last one is pronounced pai, and now it's pronounced hai. And that goes back to our a previous lesson where we were talking about how um, when, or wait, you know what? Was that a, that might have been a office hours where somebody asked that. I can't remember, but, or no, no, I'm sorry. It was a Reddit post that I was responding to. <laughs> I'm getting kind of mixed up here. When, um, Certain sounds are combined with other words, or certain certain words are combined with other words. They can become they can morph or can, can become voiced. So, hi can become pi, depending on what's combined with it before it. Or hi, I should say, can become pi when something is combined differently. So anyway, this is called ko hi, not uh, not pi, not ko pi, but ko hi, which again means um, someone below you. So, you know, uh, if you're a junior again, it would be a freshman or a sophomore, or <clears throat> if you're a boss, it would be one of your subordinates. So, uh, kohai, no, heya, room, heya, heya, de, yarimasu. So we'll do it, or I'll do it, inside of my Kohai's room. So whatever you're doing, maybe studying. We're studying in my Kohai's room. So um, the action, again, is taking place inside of the room. And this, this verb right here is pretty important to know. Yari, yaru or yarimas. Yaru. Uh, it just means to do. Um, it can be similar to shimas or sudo, the two probably most really common or important verbs, sudo and yadu. Um, yadu is kind of more, it's less common. Sudo, sudo is really, you can attach sudo to almost any like Chinese combination kanji and it becomes like to do that word. And yadu is more, like yadu uh, can be used to mean to have sex, um, it can, so it's kind of it kind of have a, has a little bit more of a a colloquial connotation to it, I believe. Um, but it can also be used in very, you know, in other situations to have very normal meaning. 
But again, they both just mean to do and are both very common and important words to remember. So, that he must. Uh, and another one, another way I wanted to point out to use day is like when you're using a tool. So, I'm going to use this tool to do something. So, uh, the example I came up with was hashi day. Hashi is uh, chopsticks. Hashi. Not to be confused with, ha with the other hashi, which is bridge, but hashi chopsticks de torimasu. Torimasu. Toru or torimasu is to catch or to take. So I'd like to give the visual, uh, um, you know, representation here of you catching like a fly out of the air with your chopsticks. So you're using day is you know along with a tool. So like if you're talking about writing with a pen or a pencil, you would use day. So um, <clears throat> again, day is is different from knee in that it's where an action actually takes place. That's what it's marking. And you know obviously or maybe not obviously, but hopefully you're seeing you know that usually I think Japanese particles almost always mark what's coming before them. So um, for no, you know, who's, it's a possessive. So what, what's, you know, what has possession or whose is it? It's what before, what's before that, the coal highs. Where day, action's taking place. Is it taking place on the verb? No, it's taking place before that uh, with the hashi or what you're using is the hashi. So same thing with knee, um, whatever, whatever knee. It's always before the particle. So uh, the last one I want to talk about here is wo. Wo and wo is used with verbs. Uh, it's the the linguistic terminology is uh, a direct object marker, and uh, so it marks what is directly acted upon. So it's used before a verb and after what is directly acted upon. So for example, bike, uh, motorcycle, wo. And wo, if you remember, is kind of almost like you, you almost say wo, like wo, which is how you type it. And you almost do kind of close your mouth a little bit, make a little tunnel, and almost have that wo sound. But it's definitely not like a, an English pronounced wo. Um, it's it's almost just an O with a little W in front of it. So baiku o unten shimasu. Drive the motorcycle. To drive the motorcycle, or I will drive the motorcycle. In a lot of these senses, really, you would be saying it's implied again, or you would say like, "Watashi wa baiku unten shimasu." Anata wa baiku unten shimasu. Itsu baiku unten shimasu ka. You know, you're adding other things. This is just kind of the basic part of the sentence that includes the particle that we're studying. So, again, it's used always before a verb, and um, it's marking what is acted upon with that verb before it. So another example, um, commonly, that you'll use as a learner of the language. Uh, Nihongo, Japanese, hopefully you all already know that word. O hanashimasu. Oops. Speak Japanese. So again, you have your verb, and well, is the marking the object of what the verb is doing, and that's Japanese. So you're speaking Japanese, and again, o is always work used with verbs. Final example here: terebi, TV, o, mimas, to watch, mimas. So I hope that you're kind of seeing the uh, the repetitive structure of a verb and then the object marker, direct object marker particle will marking what the verb, uh, what is acted upon by the verb. <coughs> so the first sentence here again, baiku wo unten shimasu. The second here, nihongo wo hanashimasu. The final uh, example, terebi o mimas. All right. So, 
those are the particles I want to go over today. Again, ni, de, e, and o. So we'll have some homework problems uh, with using those. So um, moving on, let me check the uh, chat real quick here, make sure we're good. No, okay, it looks like we're good. So moving on to some verb conjugation. Okay, well, hope, maybe you don't know what a verb conjugation even is. If you've never really studied verbs or languages, then maybe you don't know what it is. It's basically just when verbs change forms uh, for different meanings. So it's just verbs changing, grammatically changing. So like changing to past tense or future tense or <clears throat> potential tense or uh, something like that. So verb conjugation in Japanese can be a little bit daunting, but again, I want to highly, highly, highly recommend that you check out the Aaron Buchanan's verb chart that's posted in the uh, uh, useful links document that has every possible verb conjugation for every different type of verbs. If you remember, um, I'm only going to go over a few of them here, but there are many, not many, but you know, a number of different endings for the verbs where they might end. They, the base form always is the u form, but it could be like ending in nu, mu, ku, su, hu, uh, bu. Uh, so just remember that all of those can, can potentially conjugate differently. So if you ever get lost or don't know, then maybe you can make a list for yourself or you can reference that verb chart. But, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so first I just wanted to say real quick that, you know, a verb in its base form, again, we'll do kudu to come the irregular. Uh, that conjugates to, or that, and to become, for it to become polite out of its base form, it's just kimas. So again, this first letter, or the first sound here changes from ku to ki because it's irregular. Um, so it changes to kimas. Kanji stays the same. Uh, yomu, to read, yomu becomes yomimas. So the mu changes to mi, and then you add mas. Shaberu, to speak, oops, shaberu, to speak, becomes shaberimas. And finally, miru, which is the ichidan verb, if you remember. The other two above that, yomu and shaberu, are godan verbs, but ichidan becomes mimas. So the ru just completely drops off. And I wanted to use these two here because you can see that the base form is the same, but this is a godan verb, so it changes to rimas. The ru doesn't drop. And the ichidan verb, ru, miru, the, verb, the ru just completely drops off and becomes mimas. Okay? So... Uh, next, I want to go over te form, and this isn't really conjugation per se, it's just a change of politeness. just wanted you to see how that works, uh, and I think maybe many of you have already seen this, and we, in the examples above, you, you're, you're, or the examples we already did, you've seen verbs changing uh, into the, or being in the mas form. So the te form, uh, you know, the te form can be used to form, it's a very, very useful um, conjugation really because it's used so much for combining uh, verbs with other verbs or you know combining verbs is like a series of events um, so I would yeah highly recommend you memorize how to conjugate each type of verb or each each different verb ending into te form but for a few examples kudu excuse me becomes kite, kite. Yomu becomes yonde, yonde, yonde. So the mu drops and it becomes nde. And with this <coughs> type of conjugation te form, um, 
the, the final sound will dr always drop and change. So just keep that in mind. Next, Shaberu uh, to speak becomes Shabette. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> and you'll see here that um, it's not it's not kite, but there's actually a little tsu here, so it's a double T. So shabette. There's a little break or a little pause, a continuation of the sound. Shabette. So it's not shabette, it's shabette. Uh, that's how that the this is how the you know Godan Ru conjugates. And actually, there's a couple other that conjugate this way too. So there's a couple repeats. But anyway, moving on, Miduk to watch or to see becomes mite, similar to kuru. The ru drops and just te, so mite. Um, so that's that's how you conjugate verbs into the te form. Again, there's other ones, um, but you know I would just advise you to learn those on your own. They're out there. Maybe I'll throw a few in the homework that'll help you learn. But obviously, you know, it can vary. It's all ending in te or de, but it can vary, you know, uh, outside of that. So, uh, moving on. Just a few useful, uh, a few useful uses, <laughs> sorry, a few useful uses of the te form. So, like, uh, mite. Oops. Mite, miru, mite miru, mite miru is try something. So te form plus miru, I should probably not use miru. So, <laughs> alright, how about yomu? Yonde miru, to try to read. Or how about te kudasai? Yonde kudasai. Please. Uh, it's it's a polite request. So, yonde kudasai. Please read it. Or how about one that we've already learned? Uh, the a present form to conjugate a verb into the present form. So, yonde imas. Yonde imas to be reading or yonde iru. So those are just some really uh, you know just very, very useful and common ways that te, the te form is used. And you can see here that um, right away, really this is just a combination, a way to, you know, it's just used to combine two verbs. And, um, but being so common that it's not just combining two verbs, it, it has, a, it, the word, it becomes, a, you know, a whole new word within the conjugation. So um, it's not, you know, to see, and read, or to read and see, it means to try to read. Where meter by itself doesn't mean to try. Um, I mean, it can, but you know, in this, you know, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, so let me see where we're on the time here. Well, I suppose we can do one more. So uh, the a form of verbs, and this is. Um, a, I forget what the name, I should have looked it up, but it's like, oh, is it potential? I think it's the potential conjugation. And um, so for kudu, it's kireru. Wait, I'm sorry, no, it's not. This is a, uh, abnormal, so it's koreru. Koreru. Uh, yomeru is yomeru, so the mu base form changes to me, like I set up here, a form. So u changes to a. And this is a way that most of them will change, unlike the te form where um, you're totally dropping the sound and adding something else. Most of them will conjugate by having the base letter or the base sound just change from u to a or something else. So uh, the next one is shaberu. 
And that is, can you guess? Shabereru. I'm sorry, this is new, not new. Shabereru. Yomeru. Shabereru. And then, uh, Miru is a little bit tricky because it, Ichidan verbs are almost act as irregulars in some conjugation senses because the, the letter is dropped and it changes to edu. And um, another Ichidan verb, taberu, is different from this. So it's taberareru. So you can see that they almost become irregular verbs and that they change differently depending on the verb. So you'll probably have to learn those, you know, one by one, but there really aren't that many, so don't, don't get too worried about it. So now this is a potential firm. So what this literally means, yomeru, it means uh, to be able to read. So um, that's how it conjugates. You're, you're changing the word from just to do something to to be able to do. So you can negate this and say, I can't do it. Or you can say, can you do it? Yomeru ka? Yomeru ka? Or, uh, and, and the more, the formal way to say these is to drop the ru and to add mas, which we kind of already learned today. So, the, the, the ru is a base form. The polite base form is mas. So, potential conjugation. Another quick tr uh, quick tip with these is you can add to be a conditional conjugation. You can just add ba, ba. So kore ba, yome ba, shabere ba, mie ba, mie. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mie ba, taberare ba. And that's if. So if you do something. There's other ways to say if, but this is kind of an easy way. So um, you can see how it kind of, it doesn't really make sense because it's not really technically, you don't really have that uh, core meaning of the potential, con or the potential conjugation that we just talked about, whether you can or can't do something. Um, so it just uses that a conjugation and then adding ba instead of ru means if. So, yome ba wakaru. If you read it, you will understand. Shabere ba urusai. If you speak, you're loud. Mie ba kire. If you see it, it's pretty. So, uh, just kind of another usage of the, of the e conjugation. So, again, koreru, yomeru, Shaberu, mieru, and then taberareru. So again, hopefully you're kind of seeing a pattern here where, you know, obviously the first part of the verb stays the same, unless it's an irregular, the sound stays the same as well. And uh, then the, se the, you know, the okurigana changes form or gets dropped completely depending on what conjugation. And um, if you look at that verb conjugation card, you'll see that there are quite a number of different kind of con conjugations. There's probably, I don't know, five or six or seven or something like that, eight maybe. And each one can kind of have a little intricacies and little tricks and tips and extra words. So it's a pretty heavy undertaking to learn it all, but, um, you know, obviously extremely useful and extremely important. So uh, we'll be slowly introducing, I'll slowly introduce some more of these as the course goes on. I think I might do conjugations in one or maybe two more lessons. So. Um, got about five minutes left and I was going to talk about uh, a little bit today about religion in Japan and um, so I'll just make it real quick I guess that's kind of today's trip tip and um, <clears throat> if you know if you know much about Japan you probably know that they're um, and this ties in with a trip tip because obviously one of the main draws uh, for tourism tourists in Japan is the temples and uh, uh, shrines and you know obviously they're extremely beautiful and I love going to them it's like you know it's just surreal they're just so 
uh, so Jap Japanese, and you know they'll be in like they'll be this you know hundred year hundreds of years old uh, wooden building right in the middle of of a big city. It's just really cool to see. And uh, if you ever go to Japan and kind of can go anywhere you want to, I would highly recommend that you go to Nara or Kyoto. Uh, they're nearby each other, and Kyoto is like the old capital before Tokyo became the capital. It was the capital back in like the classical period. So there's a lot of really old beautiful buildings, a lot of which were spared, I think, in World War II. Um, and it's just an amazing, amazing place. There's so many old, if you're into like old classical Japanese art and stuff like that, that's where you want to be. And uh, Nara is its own little city of just like old, it's just like an old preserved city of um, just old classical buildings. The biggest wooden building in the world is there that houses, houses this huge, Buddha, it's where you can feed the deer. If you've ever heard about like feeding the deer uh, by, with your hand, that's in Nada. And, um, but anyway, so, you know, obviously that's all stemming from religion in Japan. In religion in Japan, there's the uh, native religion of Japan is Shintoism or Shinto, uh, the way of the gods, directly translated, the way of the gods. And um, it's really a, na a naturalistic religion that's really in tune with nature. It's where like every thing has a god in it like every rock every tree whatever has is a god um, or has a god's body inside of it and I'm not like an expert on Japanese religion so I could be butchering some of this but um, obviously you know it kind of has been a major player in why the Japanese are so seemingly so close to nature and just kind of so uh, natural and you know they're kind of eco-friendly and stuff like that and you know the Japanese are very environmentally friendly and I think that legacy of that's the legacy of the Shinto religion and um, the other major and honestly that's that's the natural or that's the native religion of Japan but um, for a lot of Japanese history the big imported religion was Buddhism obviously coming from um, you know China and so over time Shintoism and Buddhism have just kind of intertwined with each other and become the religion of Japan so it's really just kind of like everything else in Japan where they just kind of adopted it and made it their own. So kind of an ongoing, ongoing theme with a lot of things in Japan that I've already talked about, if you remember, um, you know, that's just what Japanese tend to do. So it's a very, it's a kind of mix between the two. And, you know, the Japanese, the Japanese people most identify as atheists uh, or agnostic. So good for editors, uh, <laughs> but, you know, the religion for them is really just kind of ceremonial and cultural and you know they do their little ceremonies but once they leave the religious grounds it doesn't really affect their life in any other way I mean they may do a few things at home like praying to a shrine for a dead relative but outside of that it's not like in America where it really is pervasive throughout uh, their entire way of thought whereas you know what you know like in America where a lot of fundamentalist religious people it's like all everything in their life is supposedly centered around you know their religion in Japan it's not like that so um, and uh, with with Shinto there's the shrines which are Jinja and with Buddhism they're the temples which are Otera <clears throat> so it's like whatever whatever Otera like the city usually names Otera or the town's name Otera same with the Jinja and or Jinja and um, you know they're extremely beautiful I highly recommend you go check them out go online and look at some images of some famous temples and, and shrines and temples and you know some of my fondest memories from Japan and what I always look forward to are, are checking those out so there's a few um, you know ritual or kind of things that you kind of need to know I guess obviously you don't wear your shoes in any of these places you take off your shoes um, a lot of times you can go in these places any time of day. They're open, you know. It's an open. They're usually open grounds. It's not like there's locked doors or locked gates. You can pretty much enter the grounds at any time. Um, a Shinto shrine can be anything from a small little, you know, uh, wooden shrine-looking like the house uh, for some god, little rock, rock like mountain god. Like people, you'll see driving along in the countryside, people will have a little shrine at the base of a mountain. It's like, you know, they come and you know, offer up sake and rice for the mountain to like grow trees or whatever is going on in the mountain. Um, but, you know, if you're going to like a big shrine where people live or priests live, a lot of times you'll go up. If you really want to visit, I think really what you're supposed to do is go up and there'll be a little wooden box that you throw money into. You throw your money in the box and clap twice and like clap twice and 
pray, and sometimes there'll be a little bell that you ring after that. So that's the order. You throw the money in, clap your hands twice, pray, ring the bell twice. Um, again, I'm not really a huge expert on, on religion in Japan, so uh, if you're really into it, um, I recommend you, you, you know, there's obviously a bunch of resources out there and a bunch of information, a bunch of beautiful pictures, and a bunch of places you can go to in Japan uh, to learn more about it. So very interesting stuff, very cool stuff. Uh, another one of those things in Japan where it's like, even though it's a super modern society, you know, you can still go visit these places and, and learn all about it and really feel like you're in, you know, medieval Japan. It's really cool. So, um, once again, we're right on time today, which is great. <laughs> Not sure how that keeps happening. Uh, thanks everyone for your patience again. Um, I have an interview tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Uh, really, really, really hope that it works out because I really want to work at this place. So wish me luck with that. Maybe I'll, uh, if I hear any good news immediately right away, I'll let you guys know. Um, but everyone have a great holiday season. Have a great Christmas. And uh, thanks for tuning in tonight. We will see you on Thursday. Minasan, arigatou gozaimasu. またね。さようなら。<音楽><音楽>